Hi, my name is Abe, and today I'm going to talk to you about rates of change. Actually, you already know what rates of change is. The rate of change is simply the gradient function. So, whenever we talk about rates of change, what you need to think about is f dashed of x. Yeah. How so? Well, it's pretty simple. Given some function, right, you know that the, the gradient just represents how fast the thing is changing. So if your gradient is flat, gradient is zero. That means it's not changing, right? It's got sort of this flat line thing going on. But if f dashed of x is bigger than zero, you know that your function is increasing, right? It's going like that. But if f dashed of x smaller than zero, you know that you're decreasing. And that's what rates of change is all about. Increasing, decreasing functions. And that's it. The more positive your f dashed of x is, the steeper your increase, right? And the more negative it is, the steeper your decrease. Pretty simple, pretty simple. So what I want to do is basically point out to you one of the key things about rates of change, which is that it involves units, involves units. Because if you're measuring anything in real life, not using units makes your numbers completely pointless. So let's run through an example to show you how you can find a rate of change using a gradient function. So this is it. Um, this is my graph, all right? And this is a graph of the motion of a rocket where it gets fired up in the air and it sort of like comes back down to Earth. So it kind of goes like this. It kind of does that, okay? And what I'm going to do is label the y-axis h of t, so height as a function of t, and the x-axis is t. But you've got to specify what the units are, right? So t is in seconds. h of t happens to be in meters. Yeah? So we know that this h of t, this thing here is h of t, and h of t happens in, what's the unit for h of t? It's h, right? So it's just meters. But notice that h dashed of t, which is, or also known as, dh dt, is in what unit? meters per second. Meters per second because the, the unit for height here I've chosen is meters and the unit for time I've chosen is seconds. Simple isn't it? So just keep in mind that whenever you do rates of change the units are very important. So this graph I've drawn is actually well it's actually got an equation and it goes like this h of t equals 64 root t minus t. Okay? So if this equation of the height of our little rocket versus some point in time, I want you to find the rate of change of height at t equals 4. So at t equals 4, I just want to see what's happening with the rate of change of this rocket. Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? And, you know, how fast is it happening? So, another way of seeing it is I want to draw a tangent at t equals 4. What will be the gradient of that tangent? So, for instance, t equals 4 may be about here. And if I were to draw a tangent like that, I want to find what is the gradient. So remember that the rate of change is simply the derivative. 
right? So basically what it's really asking you is find dh dt at t equals 4. That's it. Not very difficult, is it? So you know how to find dh dt. dh dt, just differentiate h of t. You're going to get 64 times. Now root t is t to the half, so it's half times t to the negative half, right? Because we've taken away from, taken one away from our existing power. Minus derivative of t is 1. Just tidying things up for you, you're going to get 32 over root t minus 1. That's dh dt, right? So, okay. Now, dh dt and so at x equals 4, sorry, t equals 4, dh dt equals, well, I'm just stubbing 4, 32 on root 4, minus 1. 32 on root 4 is 32 on 2, minus 1 gives you 15. 15 what? 15 meters per second. And there, that's it. Our final answer. But what does it mean? It means, it means that at this particular point in time, at t equals 4 seconds, our rocket is still going upwards because it's a positive quantity and it's increasing and it's, it's moving upwards at a speed of 15 meters per second. Or in other words, in other words, you could say that the gradient of our line here gradient equals 15. So there it is. Rates of change as an introduction. Remember to check out my next video which talks about related rates of change. A whole different kettle of fish altogether. Hope you've enjoyed yourself. See you next time.